Good morning, everyone. The, the purpose of this morning is to talk to you about Task Force Southern. Um, Task Force Southern has been formed to investigate a number of murders which have occurred in the southern and western suburbs and also is exploring the possibility of other murders that we may not be aware of. It's my intention to tell you as much as I possibly can, but I ask you to respect the fact there will be things that I can't tell you for operational reasons or to so that we don't put people at risk by disclosing information which should remain confidential. We are investigating three murders and are investigating the possibility that there may be additional offences or murders that may be as a result of drug overdoses that may not have yet been identified as a murder. It's important at the outset to make it perfectly clear we're not investigating a serial killer, we are investigating a series of murders which have occurred in the southern suburbs by people associated with the methamphetamine scene and the criminal community. Originally, um, we commenced this investigation looking at the Robert Atkins murder, and as that investigation has progressed, we've obtained further information which has led us to the inescapable conclusion that Jeff Mundy and Trevor King have also been murdered, and that there may be others that we're not aware of. We won't specify the amount of um, offenders involved in particular deaths, except to say that we're looking at somewhere between 12 and 15 people who may or may not be involved in the deaths. This will be a long-term and challenging investigation, but we are confident that um, we will get results for the efforts that we put in. The task force comprises 42 people, We've selected the best detectives, intelligence people, and are supported by uh, some of the best forensic people in Australia. In respect to Robert Atkins, you'll be aware that he's a 32-year-old man who was single and had no children, and in the time leading up to his death had been couch surfing and staying with friends. He was reported missing on the 2nd of, uh, excuse me, that's a cart. Um, he was reported missing on the 2nd of January uh, this year, but we now know that he was murdered shortly after daybreak on the 16th of November in the Mid-North. We know in the lead up to his death that he was held captive for over a week, and we also now know that he was forced to commit crime by his captors and may have been held at another location as well as a house at Christie's Downs. On the last day of his life, we know that he was taken to the northern suburbs and he, was, he committed a number of crimes in company with one of his captors at Harvey Norman, JB Hi-Fi and BWS at Jepps Cross and also at Liquorland and Bank SA in Port Adelaide. Um, you'll see some videos shortly um, where Robert is committing those offences but he's doing that under the direction of the person that he is with and under coercion and in the mistaken belief that if he did what he was told, he would be let go. And sadly, that did not occur. Uh, Trevor King was a 41-year-old man at the time of his death. There are two investigations arising from the death of Trevor King. On the 5th of February, 2019, Trevor King was lured to a house where he was unlawfully detained and tortured for up to six hours. He was beaten, he was burnt with a blowtorch, he was set alight and his hands were smashed with a bat and he suffered very serious injuries. We believe that that was over a debt which originally started as a thousand dollar debt and later increased to ten thousand and then fifty thousand. He agreed to pay the money um, and some was paid and he was let go. However, before he was let go, he was forced to clean up the scene of the crime. Subsequent to that, he was assaulted again on a number of occasions over money and ultimately uh, four offenders were arrested and charged with his unlawful detention and the serious assaults committed on him. Later that year, we believe as a result of pressure and intimidation, he withdrew 
his statement and those offenders were released. Trevor fled to Queensland where he remained for a considerable period and then a few months before his death he returned to South Australia. On the 4th of January 2020, Trevor's body was found floating in the water at the northernmost end of West Lakes, very close to Grand Junction Road. An investigation of the scene indicated that he had taken drugs and ended up in the water. So the scene was, we now know, was staged to look like a suicide or death from misadventure. And nothing suspicious was identified at the time. We now believe that Trevor was murdered and the scene was made to look alike he had done it himself. After his death, his mobile phone was active in Lefevre Peninsula. We don't know exactly where, but we'll be seeking to establish where his phone went and who may have had it and how it came to be there. And his death's now been declared a major crime. Investigators will be trying to establish the movements in the final days of Trevor's life. We're trying to build a picture of what he did, who he associated with, where he went. And um, that investigation um, is in its infancy at this stage. Jeff Mundy was 36, he was a single man with a child and lived with his parents when he was reported missing on the 23rd of December 2020 by his mum. We now know that he was been murdered and his body has been disposed of on Flurio Peninsula. We know on the 19th of December he left home at about 10am and he filled a prescription at, the colonies, at a chemist at the Colonnades um, and then returned home and left home again about 3pm that afternoon. At 4pm he was sighted near the Seaford Exchange and talking to an unknown male um, and inquiries to date haven't been able to identify that male. So if that person is watching, we would ask him to contact us through Crime Stoppers. We're not suggesting he's involved, but we know that he spoke to Trevor and walked along with him, um, and we would like to speak to him. We know at 6.30pm he got off a bus at stop 143 in Alexander Street at Selix Beach. Uh, we're not sure where he went after that. So in conclusion, I can say that the investigation is progressing extremely well. Those involved in this crime are low to mid-level drug dealers and petty criminals from the southern suburbs who realistically get together to bully, threaten and stand over other people. The victims in this, although known to us, the victims simply made bad choices like a lot of other people. They made a bad choice to use drugs and continue to use drugs and ultimately that's led to them losing their lives but none of them deserved what happened to them. All have families, friends and people who love them and those people want answers in relation to what happened. They want the people held accountable and in the case of Robert Atkins and Jeff Mundy, they want to recover their remains. So I would say to anybody who has information, help those families to provide answers and ring Crime Stoppers tonight. Task Force Southern is one of the largest task forces we've had. As I say, it's a hand-picked team with the best detectives and people working on the job. We'll be relentless in pursuing these people and those associated with them and those who cover up these crimes or assist them in any way. And I'm sure that we will be successful. We ask anybody with information about any of these murders to contact Crime Stoppers immediately. As I said, we asked the male who was seen with Robert Atkins near the Seaford Interchange to come forward. I know that some people will be scared to provide information and help, but you need to come forward. You need to do the right thing. You need to help the families and contact Crime Stoppers today. We will have detectives from Task Force Southern available to take your calls. So if you ring Crime Stoppers, ask to talk to a Task Force Southern detective, you'll be put through. We will be able to keep you safe and we will be able to help you.
I'm happy to take any questions. Do you believe um, one or more people may have been involved in more than one of these deaths? Yes. So it's possible that someone or more than one was involved in perhaps two of these or, or three or more? Uh, as to actually who's involved with which one will take a little while to establish, but we do know that there's multiple people involved in each death. Can you just talk us through Task Force Southern, 42 people involved in this? How significant is it? It's a massive commitment of resources, but it deserves it. You know, we've got three, three people who are murdered. We are looking at the possibility that there may be other deaths in particular overdose deaths that have been staged. So we will look at those other deaths to see if there's anything that makes us now think, with the benefit of hindsight, that they may be suspicious. Have you got an idea at this stage of how many overdose deaths have happened in that period? We're finalising that. We'll release more details on that as we move forward. In terms of the overdose deaths, is it given pot shots or injected with drugs purposely? Is that what you believe? Um, the method of administration will is something to be determined, but we believe that we de definitely given what people commonly call a hot shot. Will you be going back over all the overdoses in South Australia within the last couple of months, last couple of years? Yeah, we'll look at them for a considerable period of time. We've engaged with our coronal investigation section, which is part of major crime. Um, they will be assisting with a review to identify those that warrant more detailed review. So there'll be a two-stage review process. They'll have the initial look at them. Um, and then those that they think more work needs to be done will come to Task Force Southern. Given that you're looking at low level criminal activity here, how much more difficult is it going to be to find out um, you know, who the different parties are that are involved? Uh, I've got no doubt that everybody who uses drugs isn't a bad person. You know, They shouldn't use drugs, it's against the law. They shouldn't commit crime. But the reality is people who threaten, bully, stand over, people don't like it and they want to get rid of them. So people will talk to us and I'm sure that we will be successful. Are some of your suspects currently in custody on other matters? Yes. And forgive me if you've covered it, but with Mundy, you think you said his body's buried somewhere on the peninsula. Is that being located? Is that I didn't say buried. It's, we know it's disposed of Sorry. down the peninsula, but it hasn't been located. Okay. How recent is that information? I won't tell you that because that might identify things that we don't want to disclose. Have you begun searching for either of those remains of Atkins or Monday? We've done some preliminary work short of a full scale search. Um, we need to um, refine the search area um, to give us the greatest chance of success. So at the appropriate time, we'll move forward with searches. In relation to the death of Trevor, do you know how he was murdered? Or can you tell us how he was murdered? Uh, Trevor. He was found in the water? Yeah, he was given a deliberate overdose. Yeah, so it was the overdose which killed him? It led to his death, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, in terms of the people that we're dealing with here, how would you describe them? How dangerous are they? How reckless? How brazen? Well, they probably try to talk themselves up into being big criminals, but the reality is they're thugs and bullies, you know, who gang up, beat up people sell drugs, wreak havoc on our community. Um, but we will find, we will investigate this, we will be successful, and we will hold them to the account. I've got no doubt that people will cooperate with us. As far as um, the, the group or groups involved, can you give us any detail on how many different groups there might be that are operating out of, in the southern suburbs? Oh, that'd be impossible to quantify, but in terms of what we're looking at, um, they're very fluid loose groups of people who are friends with one another today and then in three weeks later they might not be. Their, their groups aren't stable groups. We're not talking about gangs. We're not talking about organised crime um, groups that are doing this. We're talking about low to mid-level drug dealers, um, groups of people who work together for a while. Their groups might um, disintegrate. They might morph into something else and somebody else joins it, but they're unstable, fluid groups. Are drug they related dealers. to bikies at all? Oh, look, in Adelaide, every drug dealer would know a bikey, so, but we're not investigating gang-related crime as part of this. Can you reassure the public, um, who will look at this as three murders, that their activity is contained to other drug dealers, that it's not spread out into the general, general public? Yeah, all, all, of, all of those people involved um, have sadly got involved with drug-taking, the illicit drug community. 
which then exposes you to the wider criminal community. So they have been targeted because of their drug use and it will be debts and um, we're not investigating any murders. We don't have any suspicion about any murders that are not drug related at this time. Have you arrested anyone today? Beg your pardon? Have you arrested anyone today? Or do you no, know anyone this is going to be a, a very long-term, complex and challenging investigation and um, I don't expect that we will be making arrests in the very near future. We want to build a comprehensive briefs of evidence on these people and at the appropriate time um, we take action. As far as, the Sorry, as far as the cost of the task force goes, how much are you looking to spend on it at this stage? How much money has been set aside for it? Uh, I won't go into that, but um, suffice to say that um, we have briefed senior management and major crime is always well supported with whatever resources we need to investigate murders, um, as we should be, and we've never had an occasion where we haven't been supported with whatever we need. How are the victims' families coping with all of this? And have you spoken to them or got any information from them where they might have any idea as to what might happen to them? Um, we have um, dedicated victim contact officers within major crime and those people are allocated the task at the outset to um, establish contact and maintain contact and support families um, from the time the matter is first reported um, for as long as needed. It's, it's generally they're there for them for years and years. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a PowerPoint presentation which we'll now show you.